your host, Alex Garrett. Well, I've been talking a bit about resolve and resolving while the world around us seemingly is devolving. We have to find ways to resolve things. And I think for my next guest, who you've known him before, Frank Morano, he's not just a guest, he's a buddy of mine. Now seven years, Frank, almost. Can you believe that? How are you doing? How how's everything going? Everything's going great. I, I, certainly, there's uh, never been a better time to be on the radio with everything that's going on. Well, we're going to get to that in a minute. But you are on a you were on a cause all last week to resolve something that you felt was really going to be missed in Staten Island, and you, I think, with your medium article, got that resolved. What's going on in Travis Staten Island now on for July the fourth? Well, so you listeners should understand, Alex, that uh, Staten Island is home to the country's oldest continuous uh, Independence Day parade. So in Travis, the neighborhood of Travis on Staten Island, they do a parade, and it's gone for 109 years straight, and it's a wonderful parade. Uh, and it's got patriotism, it's got uh, antique cars, it's got veterans, it's got Grand Marshal, and it's lengthy, it's quite lengthy, and I don't know of another neighborhood in all of America that you could do a parade of that length and close that many streets and have the neighbors embrace it. So anyway, one of the parade participants emailed me last week saying that uh, that they were told by the parade committee that due to the coronavirus pandemic that this year's parade was canceled and that they were already beginning to plan for 2021. And now the irony of that is that email was sent to him a day or two after there was a march in the streets of Staten Island against police brutality in which 1,800 people were marching shoulder to shoulder. So my whole point was and is that if we can have a, a march that's a protest and accommodate 1,800 people all marching shoulder to shoulder, why can't we have a responsible um, Independence Day parade? And ultimately, from what I understand, there will be an Independence Day parade on Staten Island this year. The tradition will continue. We'll have our 110th uh, parade, and we will go forward. Uh, they say it's going to be in a socially distant manner with, um, you know, no people walking on the street, but instead people just in their cars. Uh, I, guess that's, I guess that's fine. Uh, but it just didn't strike me right, as the right thing to do that for one cause, the cause of ending police brutality, we're ignoring social distancing requirements, and then for celebrating America and the values delineated in the Declaration of Independence, that that would, which a lot of us view as just as important as the end, ending police brutality, that's going to be too um, too much of a burden to adhere to social distancing. So it was an inconsistency that was not lost on me or anyone else, and that's why I think uh, either the NYPD or the parade committee, whoever ultimately made the decision, I think that's why they ultimately allowed the parade. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you wrote this article also because you were getting backlash for saying, why not have this, right? Weren't you getting a little criticism for trying to compare the two? Well, that's right. I, I tweeted about that. and I said, why is it okay to have a parade of, uh, or a, a march of 1,800 people, but not a parade? And uh, essentially, I was told by various social media people that, well, you know, you have to understand, um, you know, and the cause of ending police brutality is much more important than having your little parade. So, um, uh, you know, I think the parade is just as important as any of these causes. What do you think of this now that we're seeing, you know, New York City is not going to test, you know, people if they were, if they test positive, they're not going to ask if they were at the protests. A friend of mine says that's because of insurance purposes, but it is kind of odd that they won't even ask them if they're at the protest um, and they're positive. Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, look, I mean, these contact tracers um, are there ostensibly to figure out who these people have been in contact with. You know, I mean, I didn't know that we were going to exclude certain types of activity from the contract, from the contact tracing. I mean, either the contact tracers are there to determine who the infected individuals have been in contact with, or they're not. Clearly, they're not, you know? I mean, it really makes you wonder what's the point. It really shows what a sham the whole the whole system is well and uh you know mayor bloomberg runs that i don't know if that was going to be his idea or if he made that decision or de blasio did but i'm sure that's not what bloomberg intended it to be to ignore people right i i you got me alex i, I don't know I, I uh i don't know uh, how that came to be uh, but uh you know um you got me 
Frank, you know, this past weekend was Flag Day, and on this patriotic note that we're talking about, I did feel it was important to honor it, and of course, it's the Army's birthday. I felt it more than usual, and uh, I don't know, did you celebrate Flag Day too this year? Um, well, I mean, I really, I don't know what, uh, I mean, no, I guess I didn't. I mean, I, I, I wish people a happy Flag Day. I uh, encourage people who have houses to fly the American flag, but, um, but... But no, I don't have a house. I have a, a little apartment. We have a flag up there, uh, or a flag in there. I'm not really sure what else uh, I should have uh, I should have been doing. But you know, I didn't do much else other than wish people a happy flag day. I just thought it was important because, like Independence Day, we need to keep our country. You know, we have to do everything we can to just continue to believe in America. And uh, you know, Flag Day felt like a very important thing to talk about yesterday in my view anyway well yeah i mean it's uh the tradition of flag day in the in the united states is even older than uh, than the constitution so it certainly is a a lengthy tradition and it's certainly one that's worth uh continuing to celebrate i would think well and every what six years or so you get to do a show on flag day right so you had your radio show yesterday uh, that's right that's right which was uh great i heard a few hours there it was great uh maybe for the uh, listener. I know you talk about it on the radio, but while we're there, maybe for listeners and people that listen to you, what's it like still having that cut off at seven thirty? Does that still get at you, or have you kind of acclimated to it by now? Uh, well, you know, I have to be careful with what I say here because uh, you know the, the Lutheran Hour, which um, which sponsors that seven thirty to eight o'clock half hour, they didn't appreciate uh, that. Uh, you know, that I had remarked publicly that uh, that I was getting cut off. But I just think it's very strange for one radio show to be on and then stop for a half hour only to continue a half hour later. I think it would be much better for everybody, uh, my listeners and the Lutheran Hour listeners, if there was, you know, one continuous program rather than, you know, cutting me off and continuing with the Lutheran Hour. So, yeah, I find the whole thing very strange. Back to Travis, though. You know, I'm just thinking, you you fought for a cause, and now it's back on. Don't you think people kind of forgot their causes during the pandemic, and now it's time to say, hey, if you got a real cause, let's let's get back to that and start focusing on it more? Well, I, I'm not so sure I agree with that. I mean, clearly all the people uh, showing up to protest True. Uh, the death of George Floyd had no problem remembering the cause. So, no, I, I think... Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, people are very, very capable of being motivated even in the midst of a pandemic. But I guess my thought was there's there's something that creators can do to maybe distract people. You know, 4 million people watch the rioting and protesting, which I think is crazy. And I just think we, you know, people can do better. I could do better fighting for another cause to distract us from those riots. I mean, shouldn't we kind of steer people away and get them thinking about how we can move forward instead of watching it destruct? I don't know. It doesn't do me any good well, to watch you know, it. I, I don't know if it's up to us to, you know, to tell people what's important, right? I mean, people have to make their own determinations about, you know, what they think is uh, important and worth spending their time and energy on uh, and, what you know, what they think uh, is, is worth fighting for. I mean, um, you know, so, no, I, I, as I said, I think uh, the number of people that came out for George Floyd, it shows oh, yeah. that Do you think the whole, you know, comparing one thing to another did get too much? Like, do you think everything got lumped in at one point, or have we pretty much separated rioters versus protesters uh, on the norm? Uh, well, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure I, uh, I completely, um, I'm not sure I completely get the question, but I think, uh, look, you know, there are two different, very different types of things. There's mm -hmm. you know, peaceful protesters, and then there's, People that are going to be violently rioting and looting and destroying property, um, you know. So I, I think, uh, I, I, you know, I, just with, with any cause, not just with mm -hmm. police brutality. I mean, you, when you're talking about, uh, um, you know, any, any cause, there's there's ample opportunity for uh, adopting a cause and perverting it to, um, you know, to being outside the norms of what what's acceptable. What was it like? during this whole time being on the radio during all these chaotic moments? I mean, this is this one of the most chaotic years you've been on the radio? Um, well, that's a good question. I, um, you know, there's been a lot of interesting years. Uh, certainly, 
certainly um, September 11th. That was uh, yeah 2001, and the, the the not only the terrorist attack but the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq was uh, certainly an interesting time. Then uh, you had uh, in 2003 the uh, the blackout here in New York, and then um, you know the uh, Hurricane Katrina. That was certainly an interesting time to be on the radio. Hurricane Sandy. So, um, but I, I, I think uh, probably given the three crises we're facing of the recession, the, you know, the protests uh, with respect to George Floyd and the, um, you know, the, the situation involving the coronavirus pandemic, yeah, I, I think probably you're right. Probably this would be one of the most interesting years that I've ever been on the radio. Uh, you know, it's probably the case. I just can't believe it's only June. Doesn't it feel like October and September? It doesn't feel like June still. So there's a little way to get out of this yet. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And uh, apparently the Mayan calendar, a new interpretation of the Mayan calendar, shows the world ending next week. Uh, so if that's the case, it will, will certainly have been the most interesting year that I've ever been on. <laughs> uh, did you cover that yesterday? I didn't, I didn't get a chance to hear if you had covered that or not. You know, uh, I didn't have a, have a chance to get to it, which... Uh, which is just as well, because if the world is ending, you know, uh, I guess it doesn't matter that I didn't get to all the subjects that I wanted to get to, and if the world's not ending, then, um, you know, then I guess I can talk about it next week. But that's also why you created your podcast, you know, Murano Wherever. How's that going? It's going real well. You know, uh, I think it, uh, it's given me the opportunity to have a lot of long-form conversations with people. You know, one of the frustrating things about being on terrestrial radio is, you know, you only have 10, 15, 20 minutes to talk with someone, and you might uh, get the opportunity to talk with someone very interesting, but you don't necessarily have as much time as you'd like to speak with them. So the podcast format gives you the chance to speak with them uh, in a much lengthier manner and lets them speak in paragraphs instead of just sound bites. That is true. You kind of have to rush it along on, on the radio, it seems like, for sure. Um, whereas here you can just kind of lay out your hair and just enjoy enjoy the time with the person you know which is great exactly are listeners going to be joining you now at this Travis parade have you put that offer out Uh, of course socially distancing next to you but have you offered that too like you'll get to see people there Um, we always always actually get a very big crowd so um, you know hopefully this year will be will be no different I'm sure there will be some people this year that are uh you know, that are reluctant to come out because of fears of the uh, coronavirus. But, uh, you know, it's always a a terrific turnout, and uh, hopefully this year will be the same thing. Frank, you had mentioned the NYPD earlier. I I don't know if you had any thoughts on that, but 600 now going to be reassigned. I mean, what do you think of what's going on with the NYPD and the sudden, I wouldn't say dismantling of the department, but it feels a bit like it, doesn't it? NYPD does a great job, and uh, I think it's a shame that they've been made to be a scapegoat by so many politicians that are trying to uh, tap into this uh, George Floyd wave. Um, So I hope uh, that uh, New Yorkers, and I think that New Yorkers, by and large, have a a great appreciation for the great work that the the NYPD does, and I hope it doesn't. Uh, This $1 billion budget cut that some some politicians have proposed certainly doesn't come to fruition. I got to ask about Liquid Lunch. How's that going? And what's it like turning your talents from radio to TV on the same day? Uh, it's going it's going real well. I uh, I think it's going well. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I mean, TV is a different medium. You know, it's uh, you can do some things differently than, than what you normally can do on radio. Uh, but... Uh, for my money, you know, there's nothing nothing like radio. What With July 4th, do you think we're going to have fireworks? I mean, that's now my next big question, what they're going to do with that, or if Travis is going to do something. Have you heard rumblings of that? You know, I, I, that's a great question. I, I don't know. I, I would assume so. Um, but, uh, I mean, that's a question you'd have to ask, uh, I guess, Mayor de Blasio, because it seems like there's uh, there's been a number of things that have been canceled. But I, I think the whole rationale for canceling a lot of these events has disappeared while they've been encouraging people to protest. So it seems it would seem somewhat hypocritical for them to encourage people to protest. And then also lock us down at the same time. <laughs> you know, and they want to lock us down again in Manhattan. It's kind of outrageous to think of, I, I think, anyway. Yeah, well, I didn't know that, that they were uh, going to lock 
Marcus Brown again in Manhattan, but if, if that's the case, then it would well, seem to be uh, very short-sighted. Cuomo was threatening that yesterday, and it's just like, I don't know, I got tired of his briefings after a while. Now, no offense, Governor Cuomo, but I got a bit tired of it. Yeah, you know, I I think uh, it's it's become very monotonous, and really, rather than what it started out as, uh, which was an opportunity to inform New Yorkers about what was happening with the coronavirus, instead, it's pretty much become, you know, just uh, an excuse to let him pontificate about whatever he wants for two hours. Now, I can edit this out, but I do know that you have a great uh, Cuomo impression, right? I mean, you do you still do that sometimes? Uh, I do occasionally. I do occasionally. It's, um, you, you know, um, I, I, uh, I, I, I do so occasionally. Um, I, uh, I mean, what would you like to hear the governor talk about? Governor Cuomo, you are, you know, you, you say you want to lock down Manhattan again, yet you just saw protesters. Some may not have worn masks. What's the logic between one event and then now locking down the whole city again? No one is talking about locking down the whole city. What we're talking about is in places where there have been 25,000 complaints about social distancing violations, we are talking about mandating that businesses behave responsibly. So whether it's the Hamptons, whether it's Manhattan, if there's businesses, if there's individuals which are going to put the lives of New Yorkers at risk, we are going to do what we need to do to protect New Yorkers. The thing that you need to understand, Mr. Alex, is that just because you're with the podcast world or the media world, it does not give you the right to supersede public health. It does not give you, Mr. Alex, the right to supersede what we are doing. The people of the state of New York are doing a terrific job. Mm. And yet, because some want to put their own selfish needs above that of all New Yorkers, we're not, that's not going to fly. Uh, so, consider this a friendly warning. Either you can adhere to social distancing, or we can take more drastic action. We've seen what's happened in states like Arizona, in states like Georgia, in states like Texas, where the rate of infection has skyrocketed, right? So either we can go down that path or we can continue to behave responsibly. My choice would be to continue to behave responsibly. But clearly, others have a different view. Governor, one last question for you. De Blasio, Mayor de Blasio showed up to, sick to work. Were you glad you didn't have to hear, see him on the television for one day in all of this? <laughs> Look, I, I, I'll leave the mayor's schedule to the mayor. Uh, the, the mayor, I know, has been working very hard. Uh, the mayor has been really uh, not doing the job that I would be doing if I was in his position but uh, I'm not going to second guess him. If if the mayor wants to uh, take a sick day, I'm sure the first lady of the city of New York will be more than happy to step in and do the job of the mayor. There have been some people that have said for the last six years she's been doing the job of the mayor anyway. Frank Morano, I love you, man. You are you are really. I, I've leaned on you my whole way here, and thank you for allowing me to do so um, from day one. Yeah, Alex, it's, uh, it's always a treat to talk with you. It's a great pleasure to work with you, and uh, I hope we can do so again uh, in the future. And I hope to see you in studio. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm in my room. It's like I want to see people, you know? Absolutely. I, I feel the same way. Uh, there's, nothing, um, there's nothing like seeing people in person. Amen. Well, I'm Alex Garrett. That was Frank Morano at Frank Morano on Twitter, right? So we'll follow you there. And uh, you want to shoot out your email as well? Because I know you love to get emails and phone calls and whatnot. Sure. Uh, 
uh, sure people can email me uh, anytime they like at Moreno, that's M-O-R-A-N-O, at nycradio.com. And uh, that's where you can find them. And find them Sunday mornings as well on AM 970 The Answer. Frank, love you, man. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Alex. I look forward to doing it again soon. Absolutely. I'm Alex Garrett. This has been Alex Garrett Podcasting Production.